Installing a temporary electric fence, I believe, is a skill everyone with livestock should have, uh, and you should have the materials to do it. Whether you need, as I am in this case, to block off a fence line that's being redone and still run your stock, or whether you just want to strip graze or sell graze a paddock so that you don't end up with weed problems and overgrazing issues, I think having the skills to set up a temporary electric fence is invaluable. And it's something that you can keep in the back of your shed as a kit. Come summertime, come winter time when the paddocks get heavy and pugging, why not start setting up temporary electric fences? Look after your soil and it'll look after you. As the trees have grown over time, we've got our original fence posts still pretty rock solid in the ground, but uh, the tree's grown well past them and pushed the wire off the fence. It's an absolute mess. We're really lucky. We've got a good neighbor. They said, no, no, we planted the trees. We'll get rid of them. I've marked a few I don't actually want to get rid of. Uh, these are good specimen trees and we'll work at a fence that goes around them. There's a couple of ways you can do that. Today's mission though, is to give the bulldozer operator, which is coming this week, enough room to push the trees over, but still keep our horse in the paddock. If you like this video and you want to see more of it, please do like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out enormously if you do. Now there's a number of different ways that you can go about this job, but I'm going to be using a reel. Because I only anticipate this fence going up for a couple of weeks, I don't want to be running out tape that costs a lot of money. It was, I think it was $68 for 200 meters. I don't want to be running out a lot of shock tape and then cutting it so that I've got to then do dodgy joins all the way along. So how do I load one of these reels? Well, I'm going to get the reel here and it's got a small hole right here. So what I'm going to do is get my tape, squish it up, poke it through the hole, and put a simple knot in it. Then I can simply wind up my tape. So now we've got our reel rolled, let's go put it out. Now I'm going to start out by tying off this bullnose insulator to the post that I want to run my temporary fence off. Let's go run it out. So I'm not too comfortable using the star picket on the internal fence as my securing anchor post for this temporary fence. So what I'm going to do instead is a bit of a walk around using this old orange temporary post. that's going anywhere real quick. Remember, this is a very temporary fence. This is not a permanent fence, and under no circumstances do I recommend erecting a fence like this to be a permanent horse fence. Also, when the machine arrives and we're working on the paddock, the horse will not be in this paddock. The horse will be moved to another paddock further away so it doesn't get startled and run through a fence and hurt itself. <laughs> Now there's just the small matter of running it back. You know, as annoying as they are, these trees are kind of beautiful and I will miss them. But the reality is you've got to plant your trees somewhere where they're not going to damage your infrastructure and cause your ongoing expense into future years. So now that we've arrived at the other end, the beauty of this reel is I can just hook it straight to the existing electric fence. 
Then all I have to do to tighten the fence up is simply wind in the wheel. Press the catch home and the reel is tightened. So now that we've got our fence tightened up, we can simply walk along, pick it up a couple of times and it'll actually find the fence line for you. This is another really good thing about temporary fences. You can get them remarkably straight, remarkably easy. Now let's go and put in our posts before we turn it on. When it comes to options for electric fence posts, there are quite a few for temporary posts. So I've decided in this video to evaluate three of the more common and popular options. We'll start out at the right hand side or left hand side for you with the simple little plastic stake. Now, as you can see, it's got plastic clips on it and it's got a steel spike on the end to put it into the ground. Um, what I like about this post particularly is it goes in the ground really easily and it's got a lot of give. Um, so no animal's ever gonna hurt itself on this. The downside to these sort of posts is that the tape is held in with these little tabs um, and being entirely plastic construction, they can break over time. And these posts do tend to get brittle if they're left out in the sun for long periods. These would be a great option if you're looking for a temporary fence that you can take traveling with you. Next up, we've got the metal version. This is a compromise. We've got plastic clips, which are replaceable, on a steel spike with a foot piece at the end to help you get it in the ground. It's pretty, pretty dry here at the moment. We're coming off the end of a big drought, so it is fairly dry. What I like about this post is it's still got the flexibility that the other post had. Um, it's still got the light weight uh, but it's also got the fact that it's steel. If it gets bent, you can just bend it back up again. Um, and it's got extra little spots here where you can add extra clips if you're not happy with the, the, the spacing that's provided from factory. So for my money, this is actually a pretty good option. They're about $2 a post more expensive than the plastic ones. Third option is the one that we all sort of grew up using. And that's just the double pigtail on heavy steel rod with a foot plate at the bottom. Um, this is the one that I use to tie off at the other end of the fence. I still like these, even though they're really heavy, they're just so strong. You can hit them with a tractor and not break them. Ask me how I know that. Um, these guys, you can't go wrong, but you're limited to where the pigtails are currently installed. Um, and they are a lot heavier, harder to get in the ground. I use them now more as sort of end posts or corner posts if I'm trying to put the electric fence around a corner, which you can do. All right, so those are the three posts. Let's go get them in the ground. How easy is that? Turning your electric fence on is as easy as using a little bit of insulated wire like this. What I've done is I've cut off the end, I've stripped the end off, and then I've made a second cut in the insulation and dragged it down over the tip so that I've got an insulated handle if ever I need to take it down if there's an emergency. It's much better than having those screw-on clips that you need tools and you need to turn the fence off to access. This one you can actually do with your bare hands. So there we have it. We're connected to the existing electric fence. The wire comes up to the tape, the, ha the hand reel stays attached to the electric fence and our fence is lovely and tightened up. Now what say you want a little bit neater solution to the connection to your electric fence? Let's imagine you have a paddock and you're going to consistently strip graze in the same places. You can install an electric switch that makes it even easier to attach your temporary tape. Now as far as electric switches go, there are a few options. 
I personally like this one. You can get it on eBay, you can also buy it from your local supplier. When it's up, it's off. When it's down, it's on. It's as simple as a little connection here that just joins the fences together. How neat and easy is that? Now I'm using a short section of insulated ground wire that I've put a pigtail in to help it stay on. All we have to do is take off the wing nut and the first of our washers. Put our insulated ground wire on, replace the washer and the wing nut. And then just make sure that your ground wire is in the right angle when it comes to tighten up your wing nut. When you tighten up your wing nut, you're also tightening the switch. Installation is completed the same as before. We just simply wrap this around two or three times, fold it back on itself, and now fence is off, fence is on. Fence is off, fence is on. So satisfying. I hope this video was helpful. If you like it and you'd like to stay up to date with what I'm doing around the place, please do Press the little red button down there and like and subscribe. I hope that the videos that I do are helpful and entertaining. Until next time, we'll see you later, guys.